Thanks for tuning in. It's Cody with Up to Code. Now, as you can see, it's windy, it's cold, and it's nasty outside here in Red Deer, Alberta. We're just about finished this ICF commercial building. We've had a major cold snap, which is actually perfect because I've always wanted to test the efficiency of a building like this. Didn't really know how, it had always kind of just turned around in my mind. So I thought, well, what better time than now to just shut all the heaters off, record the time, and see how long it takes for the temperature to drop in the sink. So with that, let's jump inside. I'm gonna show you around. Come on in, come on. Did I mention that it was minus 35 degrees Celsius out there? So that's minus 31 Fahrenheit. We're in the front office of this building. It's brand new, hot off the press. We're just gonna turn it over in the next few days. Now, before we get into the video, because we did this test, it's pretty cool. I want you guys to start thinking about what your prediction might be. This is a 4,400 square foot building. We shut all the heat off, all the in-floor heat, everything minus 35 degrees Celsius, how long do you think it took to maybe drop five degrees or maybe 10 degrees? Or do you think the building would freeze after 48 hours? Think about that for a sec. Now, the other thing I'm gonna point out right now is the outline of this video. I don't wanna waste anyone's time and if you're looking for info, I want you to be able to find it. So number one, we're gonna go through the building, how it was constructed, show you images of the construction and basically just go over it really quickly. How was the building built? Why is it so energy efficient? Why are they so comfortable? And also just the simplicity of the construction, but yet how effective it is. Okay, so that's number one. Number two is the test itself and the results. We're gonna keep that really brief. Then we're gonna show you infrared images throughout the building after the test was done. So as the building was cooled down, we're gonna walk around and show you infrared images at the floor, bottom of the wall, middle of the wall, at the ceilings. We're gonna see what the temperature range is, windows and everything. Then we're gonna come up with a heat loss graph to show you kind of the, how the heat dropped over a certain amount of time. And maybe we might even do a little projection, see how that goes. And then what's cool is we did a time lapse of each thermostat. And it's actually kind of cool to watch because you can see the correlation between the time and the temperature. And it's really neat to watch, but that'll be at the end. So if you get bored, you can just leave the video and you know, but first you gotta comment and say, man, Cody, you're smart, man. You're a smart dude. No. <laughs> Just joking. Okay. Now, as always, if you guys have comments, uh, ways we could have done the test differently, or maybe even in any way to interpret the data, just let me know. You know, I'm open to ideas, comments, suggestions, all that. If you need to email me, just check the description in this video or any video on the channel. We also have uh, links to our social media and also some exclusive footage. So if you want some of that, you can find the link there in the description of every video. And at the same time as we did this test, we actually ran a test on four residential homes, two ICF and two conventional. So check that video out. Uh, the link for that video is in the top right hand corner of the video right now. Um, yeah, so check out those results and we'll kind of chat back and forth and show you the how those buildings performed as well. Item number one is the building specs and how it was built. So let's jump into that right now. So this building is a 56 by 78, which is almost 4,400 square feet. Doesn't include the vestibules. Like I said, it's a full ICF right from the footing to the roof or the underside of the trusses. Now for this building, we use the Nadura XR35 block, which is four inches of EPS foam on each side and then a six inch concrete core down the middle. This is a true R35 wall, which means it's has an actual effective value of R35 because there is no thermal breaks because you have the continuous insulation on either side of the concrete core. So there's very minimal, almost no thermal breaks. So now when we start at the beginning of construction, it's just a simple strip footing. It's four foot six below grade. The ICF starts there and the ICF just carries all the way through past the slab all the way to the, to the trusses. So we have a continuous insulation on both sides of the wall, but we also have that continuous insulation, no thermal breaks where the slab connects, right? There's no cold spots. There's no, there's no thermal breaks really anywhere, you know, very few. So when we, we poured this frost wall, we poured it first a little bit higher than the floor height, 
Then we backfilled it. It was easier to work from. Then there's another 11 foot of ICF above the slab height. We set up the block, the bracing, the window bucks and everything. We poured all of that, let the concrete set up. Next was the LVL top plate. We installed that. Now, if you want to see some of our exclusive footage, like I said before, we'll have that in a link in the description and we can, we'll actually have how we install it, what we do, how, you know, all the details on how we do the top plates. Now, this part is my favorite part of the ICF construction. Doesn't matter if it's commercial, residential, when you strip everything back down, there's no bracing. These walls will freestand against any wind. They do not need trusses or a floor or anything to hold them up. And so what we did is we had the guys come in, we, drew, we flew the drone, they were body checking the walls just to demonstrate that you can do anything to the walls, they're gonna stand up. We don't need to have the roof system fully installed and braced before we can take the bracing down off the ICF. The ICF just holds itself up and it looks cool too, right? It just looks cool. These walls are freestanding, stripped down. It's, it's actually even easier to work around because now you don't have bracing in the way when you're setting your trusses. And that's exactly what we did next. Just set all the trusses, nothing crazy there. We have a, actually we have a two foot heel height, which allows us just a ton of insulation in that attic. Next, we just got a vapor barrier of the ceiling. All laps are on solid backing. Now, I'm not gonna show you all the details of how we do everything, that's for exclusive footage, but we can show you every specific thing and how we keep these buildings super airtight. So after the, the vapor barrier, then we installed Nadura's product, which is called Homega, and it's a two and five eighths inch EPS foam, but it has the wood strapping incorporated into it. So it doesn't add really much labor we install this, it stops the thermal bridging between the trusses and inside the building. But because those strips are there, we don't have to strap it later, they're built in. We just go ahead after all the home is on, then we just install, we actually install just one continuous layer of 5 8 fire guard drywall, taped it all up. Super continuous on that ceiling there. And then we just blew in an, an R50 attic. So on top of the Omega, we have at least an R60 attic in here. The windows are triple pane. Why would you go anything less if you're doing a high efficient building? They're anodized aluminum clad for exterior with the nailing flange mounted to the exterior side of the ICF. Even when there's that deep buck, I was actually worried about this at one time that there might be condensation on the windows, but there isn't. At minus 35, there's no con condensation at all on these windows. Now, underneath the slab is obviously a full layer of vapor barrier, 10 mil vapor barrier. Then we had two inches of EPS foam sitting on top of that. That's fairly straightforward. Now, in the washrooms and the change rooms, this is something you're going to want to pay attention to because this affects how, the, how our test worked out. So in the washrooms and change rooms is in-floor heating. And that was just as per the engineer's design. Just keep that in mind when we walk through the building and show you the tests and all the different thermostats, those areas have the floor heat. After the floor heat is 10 mil rebar, lay the concrete, and now we have a slab. And that about sums up the building specs and how the building was constructed. Very simple construction methods, but very effective for insulation and energy efficiency. That's why we love this system. So now let's get on to outline item number two, which is the test and the test results. So let's jump into that. Now you get to see the building a little bit, follow me. Right here's the first thermostat. So this one, we just called it front office. Now I'm gonna keep my notes with me here because there's some, some specs and data that I, I don't wanna get wrong right now. Okay. So we started this test on December 27th at noon. It was minus 35 degrees Celsius, which is minus 31 degrees Fahrenheit. We also had a wind chill of minus 40. Now, as you can see, the interior temperature was at 21 degrees Celsius. So 24 hours later, at noon again, the outside temperature was minus 19 degrees Celsius with a wind chill of minus 28. The interior temperature was 15 degrees Celsius. 
So this is where the test gets actually pretty interesting. 48 hours later, we did the test for another day. I was actually a bit worried because it's pretty cold at night. I didn't want the temperature of the building getting too cold. I didn't want any shrinkage or, you know, with the flooring or drywall or cracks or anything. I was a little bit concerned, but it's actually, I'm pretty happy that we did because this next day went goes by is where the test results get pretty cool. And I don't know if any of you have been outside when it's minus 35, but it is bloody cold. Like it is ridiculous. So I'm actually pretty happy with the results. So anyway, let's get to it. 48 hours later at noon, it was minus 26 degrees Celsius at that time, a wind chill of minus 35. The interior temp was 13 degrees Celsius. So we'd only lost eight degrees in this building over 48 hours. There was no heat running. We actually shut the heaters right off just, just to make sure we, I tried mucking around with the thermostats and we just decided, you know what, we're just going to shut them off. Then it's absolutely, you know, there's, there's no way that you can conflict and be like, oh, maybe they turned on in the middle of the night. They definitely didn't. So, and what's cool is you want to stay tuned for the end of the video for the time lapses of these, because it's just cool to watch that correlation. Like I said before, we have three more thermostats to visit. So let's go and look around a little bit. And if you're really paying attention, you might see my sweet beard action that I had over Christmas time, it's in the video too. This thermostat was labeled lunchroom and it basically takes care of this whole wide area. Each thermostat was slightly different after the test, so that's why we're going through the data right now. Plus the proof is coming at you right now. Okay, so like I said, we started December 27th at noon. It was minus 35 degrees Celsius. The interior temperature at this thermostat was 21. 24 hours later, the t outside temperature was minus 19 degrees Celsius with a wind chill of minus 28. The interior temperature at that time was 16 degrees Celsius. And then so 48 hours later, outside temperature at noon was minus 26 degrees Celsius with a wind chill of minus 35 Celsius. The interior temp was 14.5 degrees. So we'd only lost six and a half degrees over 48 hours. But in the last 24 hours, we only lost, lost two and a half degrees. So that's the cool part is it seemed, well, you'll see in the graph too, but in my mind, it did one of these and then it, it leveled out. So I've got to wait till the end to see more. Okay. So let's keep walking around and we'll show you the, the women's change room and washroom. Now remember this area has all the in-floor heating. I won't repeat the outside temperatures. I don't want to bore y'all. So we started this thermostat was set at, well, it's actually set at 72, which is 22 degrees Celsius. 24 hours later, it dropped down to 64 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 18 degrees Celsius. And 48 hours later, it dropped down to 60 degrees Fahrenheit which is 15 and a half degrees Celsius. So this section, the women's washroom and change room lost six and a half degrees. So let's go check out what the men's side did. This thermostat is the men's washroom. So like I said, when we started, it was 72 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 22 Celsius. 24 hours later, it was 63 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 17 degrees Celsius. And a full 48 hours later, it was 59 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 15 degrees Celsius. So we'd lost seven degrees Celsius in the men's change room area in the washrooms. And keep in mind, we lost that little tweak more. It's a way bigger area. And we have two outside walls in this zone too. So anyway, those are the results for that. Let's jump into the infrared images. Now we took these images once the building had cooled right down and now you get to demonstrate how even the temperatures are and we'll just walk you around the building and show you the areas that we shot the different temperatures just to note a small correction in my timing these infrared images were taking about the 28 hour mark after we started the test so it was on december 28th from 3:45 p.m to about four o'clock 
So that's about 28 hours. So good thing I took some images with my phone so I could screenshot those and show those to you. In the front office, you can see that I was using the thermal imaging camera and I pointed it at the thermostat. You can see the screenshot time at the top. So it was 345, you know, it's December 28th. The thermostat was reading 14.5 degrees Celsius. And you can also see the time on the thermostat matches the screenshot. In the front office, the floor was 14.3 degrees Celsius. So the temperature is at the top left corner of these images. And that's, so the crosshairs on the infrared, that's where it's reading the temperature. And also note that my camera takes an infrared image and also a standard photo. So we'll include those side by side, kind of how it's taken. All right. So the floor was 14.3 degrees. Low on the wall was 13.3 degrees. The glass was 9.6 degrees. And at the top of the wall was 13.6 degrees Celsius. So the low wall section and the upper wall are virtually the same temperature. The temperature on the wall is also very close to the thermostat. Now if the wall had colder temperatures or that difference between the, the actual temperature on the wall and the room temperature, if that was bigger, that's when you'd start to feel the draft. Or if you felt that the ceiling was cold, that cold air would be drafting down and that's what makes you feel chilly. You can see that the ceiling is not cold, like I already mentioned, but it's also not hot, which indicates that the, the air is balanced throughout the building and we basically have a nice sealed building envelope, temperatures consistent throughout the whole thing, floor to ceiling. You can see that the floor is nice and warm too, and that's because we have insulation below the slab not a ton, just that two inches of EPS, but enough to just break it up. And so the floor isn't trying to take on the temperature of the earth. It's actually taking on the temperature of the room and that creates that consistency. In the lunchroom, you can see my screenshot from that day. It was 15.5 degrees at 3.45 PM. So you can see again, the thermostat matches the top of the photo with the screenshot. So the time and the date there. So in the lunchroom, the floor was 13.8 degrees Celsius. Low down on the wall was 13.5. The glass was 9.1 degrees. And notice that there's no condensation on the glass, even with no HVAC running, right? They're not, they're not, they don't have water on them. They don't have frost on them. And there's no airflow happening right now. The top of the wall is 13.6 degrees. So this again just demonstrates the even temperature from floor to ceiling. Everything's very, very similar. And this is why an ICF building feels so comfortable. You don't have those cold spots. You don't have the cold drafting through the ceiling or the floor. The windows aren't super drafty. And yeah, don't forget that it's minus 19 degrees outside right at this time. I was also curious about the men's room where we had some floor heat in the, in the concrete. And also we checked the temperature above the, the T-bar later on. So in the men's room, in the change room, the thermostat was reading 63 Fahrenheit, which is 17.2 degrees Celsius. And again, the date and time of the screenshot is here just for proof. The floor was nice and cozy sitting at 17.8 degrees, which makes sense because there's that residual heat in the floor. And that's also why these areas sustain its heat longer than the rest of the building. And there was no windows, don't forget. So low on the wall was 16.1 degrees and then kind of the mid to upper section of the wall was 16.1 again, they matched. I wish I would have taken more shots of this area. It shows that the floor heat's doing its thing and giving off that residual heat. So over in the office that has a roof access, this is where I want to get a shot above the T-bar height. So this is in the front office area where the, the thermostat is reading 14.5 degrees Celsius right now. So low on the wall is 15.5, the upper wall is 13.9 as you can see and the attic hatch is 11.9 now remember we've been kind of in and out of this hatch and we haven't perfectly sealed it yet because we just got a one or two more trips up there to finalize inspections and stuff now above the t-bar the ceiling is sitting at 14 degrees celsius not the greatest image because it's kind of dark up there but you can see that right at the ceiling there's a there's no thermal bridging but also it's almost exactly the same temperature as lower down where the thermostat's reading. There's no cold driving through the attic into the ceiling, which would create that draftiness, that draft feeling. 
and it's also not hot up there indicating a poor air balance or something the whole building is equal nice cozy temperatures even throughout floor to ceiling so that wraps up the infrared images let's uh, show you what this heat loss graph looks like that right now is the real life data we based it off the women's thermostat you can see the time lapse there in the top right corner it was the most complete data that we had and we just took the temperature of the building at every hour and plotted it on the graph and that's exactly what you're looking at right now I kind of thought that it would drop off quicker the first 24 hours and then taper off more obviously in the last 24 hours it does that a little bit but I just thought in my mind it'd be a little more obvious anyway that's the real life proof right there and then now we just did a projection so this area right here is what we projected beyond that and all we did is we just took the last 24 hours we took the average temperature drop per hour so it was 0.13 or something degrees per hour and we just kept it really simple that's how we plotted this projection I know that's not what it would perform like in real life and that's where I'd rely on some of you guys to just give me some better idea of how long it would take for this building to freeze but for sure we know that it would be at least 149 150 hours to freeze this building out which is only like six in a bit days but in reality, it would probably be 10, 12, maybe 14 days to freeze. So anyway, I thought just that projection is just a fun little thing, little exercise to look at and just something to think about. So anyway, that's it for the graphs. That concludes the video. Thanks for tuning in. I do want to know what you guys saw of the, the test and the experiment. Just comment down below. You know how to get a hold of us. Don't forget to like, subscribe, stay tuned to the channel for more info, more data, more energy efficiency stuff. I do want to give a shout out and a special thanks to my staff, Matt, my brother Matt, Rudy, my brother Rudy, Shelby, awesome apprentice, yay. Thanks for helping me collect the data and all the work that you've done on this building. I also want to do a special thanks to GATX for letting me do an experiment on this building, for taking the time and the care to actually build a real energy efficient building. It's been an awesome opportunity and awesome project. So with that, we're going to sign off and we'll see you around. Thanks for tuning in. We're rolling. That first one was perfect, but I f***ed it all up. Do you want that on film? <laughs> and, oh my God, okay. <clears throat> oh. Okay. What am I doing? What am I doing? The windows are uh, basically just, a, oh. The windows are, darn it. With those test results now, <laughs> with those test results, which word should I use? With those test results. Now that you've seen the, oh my God. <laughs>